te encontramos en un especial de lujo, una banda que viene de visita y que tiene una gran cantidad de seguidores, no solamente en México, sino en todo el continente. Estoy hablando de Bring Me The Horizon. First of all, thank you so much for your time this interview. How do you feel being here in Mexico? Yeah, excited. Cool. Now, talking, talking about, about this album, That The Spirit, tell us how hard or, or how fun it was the creating process. How can you explain it? Yeah, it was fun, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed it. It was quite kind of uh, relaxed. We did it ourselves and we didn't work with a different producer. So, yeah, it was cool. We kind of did it like at our own pace and we, we, we wrote most of it at Ollie's house, actually. So, And then, um, yeah, we recorded it in Santorini. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of a fun... Oh, fun. It was hard. It was hard work, but I mean, we didn't have to answer to anyone. So it was on purpose, or it came natural. The change of sound of the band with this album. Um, it came natural in a sense that it's it's the kind of music we wanted to write, but at the same time we were pushing ourselves very hard as musicians and um, to to write it. You know what I mean? Like it it took a lot of it took a lot for me to like step up my game with singing and stuff like that, and just songwriting and being a, a bit braver with like putting more on show and you know using less and less distortion and being less heavy but doing something that's still really hit, you know hard hitting and stuff so it's natural in the way that it's it's exactly what we want to be but it wasn't natural in in the sense that it just came easily to us you know we had to put a lot of hard work in to, to get to the Do you feel that you move on from a comfort zone with this album uh, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, like Ollie says, me singing and stuff, he's had to step that up. And just us as musicians in general, you know, we've had to, well, I have had to adapt my drum playing, like the old stuff's a lot, of, a lot of fast stuff, and this stuff's a lot more controlled, and there's a lot more thought about, you know what I mean? It's a lot more musical, if you get me. So, yeah. Cool. Now, if you have to, to say a lesson that Semtipern will give it to you, what could be the biggest lesson that that album gave it to you? Uh, I think it gave us confidence that we can work on ourselves because we doing the album we knew what we wanted and then afterwards we were just like okay next time we know what we want to do so we're going to do it ourselves uh, the experience of playing at Wembley Stadium such a great place uh, tell us a, a little bit of the experience oh yeah it was good it's like um, I suppose when when you're playing in a band that's kind of like the dream is to play a venue like that so when we got the chance to play it and it was as good as it was. It's, it's pretty crazy, and like it was like about 10 years of the band as well and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was a good show. How do you prepare the, the morning before that kind of show? How do you prepare? How much nervous? How much like anticipation do you have? I don't know. There's not much we you can do at that point. <laughs> you kind of have to be a bit more prepared. I think uh, Wembley came at the end of a lot of touring for us, so we pretty much. I think we were quite tight anyway, so it was just a question of thinking more about the extra songs we were adding in because we wanted to do a couple more like special ones for the show and do a long set. And then it's like things like pyro and making sure you don't get set on fire and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and obviously there's a lot of production stuff. So it was scary because like a lot of bands play Wembley and it's it kind of can define where you go on from there. Like and especially because it wasn't part of a tour, it was like our one big show in England. It was like. It, it had to be really good or else it, would, it could have potentially defined where we went next and what we did and you know we played with bands that we played with bands at uh, Headline Wembley and they've never got past that stage you know they've never gone further than that and stuff so it, it, it was nerve wracking in that sense I remember we were all on the day we were all like all our family were there and everyone wants to talk to us and all that and we were all just like stressing out so much <laughs> we couldn't hardly talk because it was just like it just felt so huge, but it was amazing. Now, Ali, we're talking about the Enemy Awards, the incident with the Coldplay table. I think it's great. I think that awards need that kind of shit because it's kind of boring lately, the, the awards. Tell us a little bit. It was, I read that it wasn't on purpose that you didn't know that was Coldplay table. In your perception, what happened there? Um, it was just one of those things that you just do it and you don't realize how much of a big deal yeah. it's going to be. And, um, 100% I had no idea it was Coldplay's table. Not that that would have stopped me if I did, but you know, it was, okay. I, was, I was out there and I just, I just wanted to do something that, you know, get our band noticed and like, like yeah, at the end of the day, that's what awards are meant to be about, you know what I mean? And we were, we were playing to a, a crowd that didn't know who we were, probably weren't that interested, and unless we did something like that, we probably weren't going to get noticed, you know what I mean? We probably weren't going to get anyone really 
even paying it, wasn't any attention and stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, that was kind of the, the thought process behind it. Um, we had no idea how much it was going to snowball out of control after. And, and when did you realize, oh shit, this is a play table? I mean, do you check it out when you were on the table? I think one of the band told you me. You didn't know till afterwards, did you? Yeah, I, think, I think one of the band told me um, that it was their <coughs> table. Um, and I was like, oh shit, really? <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, talking, talking about, about uh, lyrics, about perception, how much have changed the perception about death since you start with the band until now? Uh, whose perception? Ours or...? Yeah, like the band in general. Um, I don't know if that's changed a lot over the years. I guess... I, no, I don't know. <laughs> that's a really weird question. <laughs> Took me off guard. But, um, but do you think? Do you do you write sometimes some, sometimes about that in your yeah, music? Yeah, I mean, yeah. To be fair, you're right. Uh, it's, uh, it's something I am infatuated with, and it's something that I think most people are. It's the unknown, and it? it's the big question, and it's 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 always looming over our heads. And it is a it is usually used as more as metaphors, and you know, a way to get a point across rather than it being literal. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've had some stuff in the past where I've talked about romanticizing my death and stuff like that and people not being happy, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a very powerful word, it's a very powerful emotion, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's the easiest way to get to someone's heart, you know what I mean? It's the, it's the easiest way to get a point across when you're talking about depression or you're talking about emotion and stuff. And, um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where people can take it out of context and get, get mixed up, but it's, it's kind of... It's kind of there for people to explore themselves and, and take what it means to them rather than me to try and explain it in interviews what, what it means, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, talking, uh, we're a music channel, so I'm going to ask you about some videos and tell me what you remember about making it. Start uh, with a Shadow Moses. Cold. It, it was really fucking cold, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess so. Um, we did it in Germany. We shot Shadow Moses and Sleepwalking back to back in Germany, and I just remember it being extremely cold. We'd do a take. And then we'd have to run into the van and get warm for our coats on. <laughs> it was like minus 11, wasn't it? Yeah, really? yeah. It, was, it was ridiculously cold, so... Well, like, like trainers and shit, weren't we? Yeah, we just, we just had normal clothing on, so yeah, after we'd, we'd do a take, run in the van, get warm, get back out, do another take, and... So yeah, it was just extremely cold. Now, other one, a throne. Throne? Uh, throne, pretty cool. Uh, it was quite easy, to be honest, because it would just stood in a room in front of a camera, and then the rest of the stuff was done separately. So, I mean, for me, I only got filmed for about 20 minutes in the whole day, so it was <laughs> easy. Yeah. Cool, now the other one, it never ends. Long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It was the uh, same director. Same director was film, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, it was based on an idea that I had, uh, that I presented to the band and, and kind of told them about it, and they were into it, and gave it to the director, and he, and he kind of like, that's what, came of it sort of thing and it was like the song it's, it's it was kind of meant to be a, a bit of a statement about like how people want a piece of you and stuff and how stuff like that can really destroy you you know what I mean and, to, and um, yeah it was particularly like what's the word it was particularly like uh, meaningful at that time in my life as well cool. now uh, your experience of also working in a, in a graphic novel raised by raptors It's totally different thing that you do in <coughs> Bring Me the Horizon. How was the experience? Or how is the experience? It's cool, yeah. It's something that I'm kind of doing behind the scenes while I've got time to do it with uh, with some friends and, and that. Um, and yeah. Now, do you think that at, after so many years, the internet helped or it hurt music? It helped. What's that, sorry? It helped or it hurt music? Um, a bit of both. You know, I think for us, it, it kind of helped helped us get our name about there and it, you know what I mean it helped us um, to help people get into us you know what I mean but I think in, in a bad way I think it's a lot of people nowadays they see bands getting successful and they just people nowadays just want everything instantly you know what I mean they want they want this instant fame and all this stuff and all people just don't seem to want to put the hours into it you know what I mean but whereas we we use the internet to help us but we also we worked our socks off you know what I mean we, yeah. we played Whatever show for whatever money we didn't, we traveled around the world. We've been doing it for 12 years, you know what I mean? Whereas nowadays, I think people just see that and they like expect success nowadays, whereas yeah. we worked for it. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's different in it. There's good and bad things about everything, so I don't know. And what is the key of consistency in your band that after so many years you're still together? 
Yeah, that's, we're friends at the end of the day, you know what I mean? You see a lot of bands come and go and members leave band. I mean, we've had members leave and stuff like that, but we're friends at the end of the day and we, we, that's why we wanted to start this band because we were friends and we wanted to play shows and play music together. It weren't about being famous or being successful. That, that All that stuff's cool, do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we just wanted to play gigs and that were it and that's... That's what it still is for us, you know what I mean? And, and um, I think that's one of the good things about our band is that we never expected anything. We, and we just worked hard and we just, yeah, stuck to our guns. And Talking about Latin American uh, crowd, Mexican crowd, how could you describe it so far? Loco. Loco. Yeah. Are you having fun with, uh, have you tried tequila, mezcal, all the Mexican alcohol? Yep. <laughs> all that stuff. With all the warm and everything? Uh, yeah. Done it, not warm. No, well. Yeah. I, I think we have once before, haven't yeah, we? Have we? Yeah, we've done it before, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. We like it here, you know what I mean? The food here is good. The be beer is good. <laughs> yeah, and we like oh, the Micheladas. Micheladas, awesome. yeah. Um, it's good. We, we enjoy it here. It's good. Cool. Now, after all the singles in this album, uh, is it going to be another single or do you don't think so? Yeah, there'll be a couple more. Okay, so you, you don't start already a creating process for what could it be a new studio album or new music for Bring Me Horizon? It's not something we're thinking about right now. We still feel like we've got a lot to accomplish with this CD. Cool. Now, do you think that right now rock and roll is in crisis or not necessarily in the mainstream way? Um, I don't know if it's in crisis. It depends. depends what you classify as rock and roll, you know what I mean? If, if you classify bands like Royal Blood or and Muse and stuff like that as rock and roll, then there's there's, there's stuff coming up and coming. There's, there's there's bands that you can like. But I don't know. It, for our scene, it's it's in crisis. Definitely, the bands that we are associated with and stuff like that. There's there's not really anyone holding the flag. Um, so yeah, I guess I think it depends who you ask. But do you think your scene? Is, is still have the the power to not just your band but another bands like like keeping going. Um, I think if the I mean there's yeah there's always there's always bands that do come out you know what I mean and that but maybe I'm the wrong person to ask you know like because it's not it's there's nothing I can see there that's any good. <laughs> you want to say something? Then? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anything you want to say to all of your fans in Latin America? Uh, yeah, thanks for supporting us. Gracias. And, uh, yeah, gracias. And thanks for coming to shows and uh, making us feel good in your country. Awesome. Pues bueno, ya lo vieron.